And Kate, so I want to ask you something. Have you ever thought about a smart guy or girl in your class who always gets good grades and wins every competition they participate in? Maybe you're that person, or maybe you're not. But have you ever thought about all the hard work and pressure there's behind an achievement or a first place? Well, guess what? I'm that kind of person, and believe me, I have always tried my best at everything. And it takes a huge amount of effort, sacrifice, tears, and many more. For many years, adults thought that in a school or college, we live happily. We are not worried, because our only obligation is to study. Well, let me tell you, adults are wrong. Because nowadays, there is a lot of pressure among these groups. Why, you may ask? Because everyone wants to be better than the other. Every kid wants to answer the question. Every kid wants to have a 10. Because when they go home and tell their parents, their parents would tell them, good job. But what proved to me as stressful are the expectations parents have for their children, which in turn grew into large importance that these children could not carry anymore. According to the statistics published by the National Crime Record Baru in India, there's almost one student every hour that commits suicide. Another study, part of the OECD program International Student Assessment, reveals that the young people in UK experience lower than average life satisfaction. Just 28% describe themselves as very satisfied with their lives, compared with an OECD average of 34%. British teenagers are highly motivated about their schoolwork, but are more anxious, more likely to be bullied, and are less satisfied with their lives compared with their peers elsewhere in the world, according to a survey. Almost a quarter of British pupils who took part in the poll say that they are being bullied a few times a month, while more than the 14% say that they are being bullied frequently. This makes the UK the fourth worst country affected of all the 34 countries surveyed. Maybe we don't see these problems here in Ecuador, but in other countries, such as China, India, Japan, or England, teenagers live with this pressure daily. And when they don't win or don't achieve what they want, they don't know how to react. This leaves me with a question. When being competitive is bad? This question is very important to me because I'm very competitive. When I want something, I really want it. I put effort, dedication, perseverance to it. But it had already happened that even with all that, I didn't get it, so I cried. For example, when I was in seventh grade, I did my Cambridge exam to have an A2 English level. For how the perfect score, we need to achieve 15 shields. Of course, I wanted them all. I studied for months. I practiced my listening, my reading, my writing, and my speaking. When that day came, I got nervous, but at the end, I did all my exams. For the results, we needed to wait one month, so when we heard they arrived, me and my friends were very excited. I remember I had a friend of mine who was nervous too, but she had a good reason. She didn't study, so she thought she had failed. I remember that day clearly. We were here in the auditorium, I was sitting right there, and they called my name to tell me how many shells I got. And then I cried. I act like a little girl who was crying and crying because I got 14 shells. And the worst of all, my friend, who didn't study anything, got 15 shells. Can you imagine it? I was confused, frustrated, but even worse, I was jealous. I hated English for many months. But now, I'm telling this story to you in English. That experience demonstrated to me that the exam was a competition. But I didn't take it as a positive competition, because I did my best. I had the A2 at each level, but I was mad and sad because I wasn't the best. My friend was. To explain better, Hebert on first semester work looks for two types of competitions among teenagers, I call it. Type one, to dominate and outperform others, and type two, to surpass personal goals and compete well. The Cambridge exam was a competition to surpass personal goals, 
but in the process, I turned it into an outperforming and dominated competition, something that I didn't manage well. Another story of me being competitive is when I was 10 or 9 years old and I went to spelling bee contest. As always, I prepared myself. I was focused, I was confident, I learned 500 words. Can you imagine it? My little boy with that amount of words, I felt like a superhero. As always, I thought nobody could beat me. That contest was mine. I arrived to the school where it was going to be, and I saw her. She was with her school uniform and her list of words. It was my best friend. In the same contest as me, practicing the same words. I hugged her and I wish her luck. I think I gave her too much luck. We spent there around two or three hours. I was tired and hungry. I continued participating and I go to the final round, the death round, where the first place was chosen. I wanted that first place. There was only one more person I needed to beat. I shake my hands with my best friend. And when I saw her, I knew that the best is the one who will win. So I lost. As the years passed, when I talk about this with my friend, we both laughed. It was then when I learned how to lose. And most importantly, I learned to see and be grateful with the process. Because all the dedication and preparation work for something. This is the type of competition teachers and parents must teach to the kids and teenagers. It's good to lose, because if kids can't accept when they lose or don't achieve what they want, they could get sick. Many teenagers around the world got sick because of being worried about being better than the other. Some symptoms or diseases are obsession with grades, anxiety, changes in appetite, working constantly, stimulate abuse, sleep difficulties, and inability to relax. It's true we live in a competitive world. Competition must increase so that youngsters could get better. However, in the process, youngsters should also learn the strength to face all kinds of circumstances. Once this happens, we will witness a better and higher level of competition, where both the winner and the loser wins. Society competition is more complicated, and the older a young person grows, the more pressing and complex it becomes. It's a hard game to engage in, because at the end of adolescence, the ability to compete will be an important goal in their independence as adults. Now, when I am at a competition, I try to remember why am I competing. Of course I want to win. But if not, I remember all the hard work, uh, dedication, and tears I have put on it. And I see that I have already won. I, I had improved on myself, I had learned more things, and I had a beautiful experience at competing. The only opponent we truly have is ourselves. No one else is trying harder. It's just me versus me. Thinking like this, and I will never lose again. It's just having experiences where I learn from my mistakes. This is how a person becomes the best without being the best. Thank you.